Hello everybody, this is Jack Thunderbolt and the master of our universe, Tojik. Hello. Uh, welcome to the first ever off-the-cuff episode of Please Get Help. Um, we've had troubles with streaming today, uh, so we decided to record a podcast and have one of our regular asinine conversations while Tojik the source film where he why did I say Waker? Source Filmmaker, and I play Banner Lord or something. So, uh, Mr. Tojik, I believe you had a topic, uh, and I feel like it would be fair to let you start. Um, well, so... Damn, I feel proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was, that was very smooth, actually. Um, so... Yeah, I kind of have a topic. It's a bit of a silly topic, I will be honest. Um, it's actually more of a question. And it involves time traveling. In particular, it's a thought that I've had a few times. And it's where... So normally, when you say if... When, when someone asks you, like, would you... If you could go back in time, whatnot, where would you go and whatnot? Um, but I've always kind of like went on in spirals about like, well, if you go back in time, that kind of, to me, that more implies like you just straight up rewind time back then. And, or and sorry, like not, not teleporting. Re yeah, yeah, sorry, not rewinding time, more of, like, the current you, like, the you, the you of today goes back to that time. Uh-huh. Um, I've always been more interested in what would you could, what would, where would you go if you could rewind time? Like, so you just straight up revert time back to a certain point in your life and this is also under the assumption you keep the knowledge of what you know will happen in the future because normally i would imagine that if we could go back in time that would that would be the catch if you could rewind but life would just play out how it already did because it's how it would play out logically i guess but I've... So are you asking any time in human history or any time in our personal history? Um, in, in your personal lives? life history, if you could rewind to, and with the knowledge you know of the future, what time of your life would you rewind to to try to start over and like do things differently? That is that is definitely a tough one. Yeah, and I, I and I'm and sorry. I know it's kind of out of trying to everywhere. Think of any other option than stop my own birth? Make sure I'm not born at all. One that's sad, and also that's just the obvious answer. I for the I guess, but that's also answer. impossible because I'm asking if well, because I'm asking. Like, where would you go if you could literally rewind all of history back? So, like, if you wanted to go back to, just for example, you wanted to go back to your life in 2013, you literally rewind the course of history and time all the way back to 2013. I, I think the best time would probably be be after I come back to Oregon, like when I come back to seventh grade, because then everything with uh, mom's awful boyfriend is, you know, not that's already happens, and like I could like, I guess do better, like not get involved with Bella and not do the other 
other things that I probably shouldn't say, but they involved not not good photographs and bad conversations. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I think that the best answer outside of try to kill myself as a baby. I, can I reword that that last bit because I was awful. Uh, that, that whole sentence is awful. I'm gonna be real with you. Yeah. Good. Um. Okay. How about you? Because I've said my piece. So. Uh, yeah, I've thought about this multiple times. Um, I would want to, and I'll admit, I don't have the exact date and time because it was so long ago. I, I would want... But like the, I think all we need is like the general idea of your age and the event of that time. Yeah. I think that's the most we need. I would, ironically enough, I would want to... Rewind to the very first day I learned about Roblox from my friend Connor. Because I remember I was at his house and he was showing me, um, he was showing me this cool site he found and he was showing me Roblox and I instantly fell in love with it. And I want to say this was like, I was like, maybe. 13 maybe younger I can't quite remember but I would want to go back to then just for one to spend to like re just because of course you're going back with the knowledge you already know of the future roughly um so one just to see the experience Roblox again in a sense for the first time and to kind of spend more time with my friend Connor because after that day I never really got to see him much so I'd want to go back so that would be one of the first things I would try to do is spend more time with him um and then secondly I'm not gonna lie what I would do and this would kind of be cheating and this 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 is why I bring up the whole having the knowledge you do now because this is kind of your chance to cheat the the past for the future. I would actually want to go back and kind of start my YouTube channel earlier, like way earlier in life. And like, how old were you? Because like when we met in like sixth grade, you already had it going for a while. So how much earlier than when you actually started it? That would be very much earlier because. Like, years earlier. Like, again, I can't quite um down the year I first... I say I probably could. When did I... When was my alt account? Or when Do was my... Do you have any approximate idea of how long it was before we met? Because uh, I was, like, the latter half of sixth grade. Let me look here. I might be able to... What the hell is... Might be able to actually sheet here if I can somehow see my videos okay why is it only um well, the earliest one I'm seeing on my channel says six years ago, but I know I have earlier ones than that because I have the like the videos we made in core class. Um, oh yeah, the video editing class. Yeah, so I want to say, let's see, so I would have been like 15 at that time. Did I just number no, yeah, no, yeah. fifteen. And I wanna say yeah, that's when I was dating Bella and I remember being fifteen. So, so I, that winds up. I wanna say I wanna say that's when I was like twelve or thirteen when I first started playing or no. I got I got a fact check here because I, I can't quite Uh, 
Roblox came out in 2006. If I was 13. So you know, you know what? I'm I'm gonna s i am going to want to say then then that was literally in 2007 when I first was introduced to Roblox. So, so you were this. When did Roblox come out? Like it came out two thousand six, um, September first, two thousand six. So I started playing like a year later. Dang. I think I want to say I. So you would have been a Roblox YouTuber from the beginning. I would have pretty much want to been from the beginning, and. Yeah, and I would want to do the most earliest animation work I could to have, be, like, because I would want, I would love to know, like, if I started earlier, like, when I was still in school, and I was still, which, granted, like, this would have been, I meant I was a kid, but I would have want to know what my skill would be now. If I started way earlier in life versus if I, where I am now, just starting this journey now. Yeah. Like that brings the question of like, what was your skill in uh, 2007? Like, yeah, I think in 2007, I didn't even know what a computer was. I mean, maybe I could like shit 2007 i think i could like get onto the old disney channel website and play the games but that's like it yeah Actually, yeah i think something along that lines so i guess maybe like i mean i know roblox has a, its own like in-store uh recording thing like who knows if that was even there yet and also you can't do audio and then that is and then that is very what I true ended up doing was typing my youtube commentary in the game chat which thinking on it was probably very annoying <laughs> yeah and who knows if and that that's actually a very fair point who knows if even any of that stuff existed like i don't even know when roblox even even added animation um tool to studio so who knows if when that would even the worst in that case scenario then younger me probably would have made machinima like that same way like old box of toys in and of itself that is that is true but like it probably would have been the start then because i remember when i was younger I did try making, like, stop-motion machinima out of, like, my Club Penguin figurines I had. I've I've done the same on, like, my DS, my 3DS with my army men. I would, like, dig little trench lines at, like, the playground or something far in my dad's backyard and have army men battle. Yeah. I have a shit ton of army men plus minifigures. Maybe we need to try that again. Have you seen the video series for uh, Plastic Apocalypse? I feel like I like have. Like the army man. Not much. Yeah. It's like a whole insane thing of like an entire little invading army of greens uh, go behind enemy lines to take out a tan base. Because it was green and it was the greens and the tans because that's all the colors of army men you know yeah um now that you mention it it, i haven't seen that one behind the scenes thing and the guy said it took like thousands of individual photos i i believe it because i remember first of all i well i remember when i actually did learn stop motion 
I remember that literally like that was the key of making it look good was taking a thousand photos of just your character like taking two steps. Um, yeah. And I remember ironically in that same core class, um, me and one of our old, our old buddies, um, Charles. Uh, yeah. Charles, yeah. Sorry, should we just say Wolfie? Well, yeah. Uh, an, an old friend of ours, Charles, he was um, he was in the core class with us, and I remember me and him were working on... We were working on a Five Nights at Freddy. The prompt was to make a trailer for a book, and it could be an already established book, or you could make it up. And at the time... Um, I want to say, like, Five Nights at Freddy's, the Silver Eyes novel, like, just came out, and me and Charles wanted to, our, we decided to make a little, um, trailer for it, and I had, like, one of the FNAF figurines, and so we, we tried stop motion to make it look like the animatronic was crawling, and <laughs> it did not look good, but it... It was so. I the video does not exist anymore, unfortunately, but I can remember the the stop motion scene in my head because you had this creepy music, and you had this actually kind of good setup where we made it look like it was from the first person perspective of the animatronic walking out of the closet and he comes around the corner and he sees me sitting at the desk and then it was supposed to be the scene of him walking across and it looked so jank like he he looked like he was trying not to step on like wet flooring like he was like <laughs> it was so cursed and it it's stuck in my head to this day. Every time I think of that class, I'm like, man, I wish I did better in that class. Oh, no, the stop motion. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you want to know what my book was for that and what I tried to do? Wasn't it some sort of, like, survival? The book was Robinson Crusoe, you know, the story about the English guy that got stranded on island. And mm. I tried to do it in Minecraft. I do. I think mine was worse because I entirely half-assed it. I, I don't know if it was, I'm not sure it was half-assed. It was like quarter-assed. I do remember it. Yours actually wasn't that bad. The only thing that, like, caught me off guard was you started it with Minecraft but then you used a bootleg Minecraft game, and I think it was Survival Craft. Because there was a distinct change of when it went from Minecraft to Survival Craft. And I, 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 during the time, it was not a big deal because this was just a project for class, but I remember little old me was like, um... That's not very, um, accurate. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I... Oh, shit, I remember. I think it was, like, the actual ship. What I remember was the shipwreck, like, the guy, like, st like struggling to get to shore through the storm. And then meeting Friday, the, uh captured native islander oh yeah and i think you literally Christo had it saved, saved from cannibals and like saved him from being a cannibal like stopped him from being a cannibal himself yeah i remember probably some poor undertones in that book but that is not that's i'm probably not a quiz for that oh yeah. I mean, were, was any of us I don't equipped? remember what Skyler's was. His was actually but, very impressive because he ironically was doing a stop motion Lego thing about us, like a stranded survivor as well. Uh, I remember I remember Charles was Hatchet by Gary Paulson. 
I don't think his was probably the best. I can't uh, remember what he did for his. Pilot that had the heart attack. Yeah, I remember the Do book, you remember but I don't. The crazy idea we had for like you to like be going through everybody else's dreams. Oh, like that one yeah. episode of SpongeBob. I do... where it started where you were self aware in your own dream. And then you like went into Charles's where he was like cosplaying an art character. I v- And then it went to mine where I was like really good at a FPS esque looking game and then you guys made me rage destroy the dream. And then finally it was Skylar in his Lego thing and we burnt his house down. I do remember that because we wanted to all four come together to make a final hurrah video. Yeah. But and I remember I actually recorded the first part of mine and it was me literally I was at my mom's house and I was just all like SpongeBob like I was like, "Oh boy, it's time to go to bed." And I remember I literally picked up my cat and <laughs> carried her down the hall and I felt bad because I was kind of battling her to stay still because I wanted her to be in the shop, but she did not want anything to do with that at the time. (laughs) But, man. And then we did Bullied versus Bullied and some other crap. Uh, Did he even submit those videos to that little competition? Um... Mr. B. I think he did, but I have no idea what came out of them. I do remember recording Bully versus Bully with Charles, because I remember he was really, like... Into it? He was really, like... I'm trying to think of the word. He was making fun of me because I could not throw a fake punch. (laughs) Like... I was always so hesitant, and, like, literally, I remember he was, like, he was, like, he was literally, like, the Joker out of one of the Batman movies. He's, like, hit me. I want you to hit me. Hit me. <laughs> and I remember, like, he, I think he even slipped it in as, like, a little blooper at the end. I finally threw, like, an actual good punch, and I, like, missed, and I hit the locker. <laughs> And I was, I was Bully literally... Bullied versus Bullied is, like, still on my, uh, both it and the bloopers are still on my channel, because I do not unlist anything. <laughs> that, that one, unfortunately, was posted on his channel, and his channel, I know damn well doesn't exist anymore, because it was also on That's a school sad. channel. That was the one with the, the... New for honor attempts. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're talking about. The he wanted to make the freaking the samurai versus the knight, the the knight versus samurai versus like rando. And you know, it's funny because for the longest time, I still had the samurai armor, yeah, but uh. I think the knight armor got left in the entrance way damaged and thrown out. I, yeah, I kept the samurai armor, and I think, unfortunately, that also got damaged while moving households. Yeah. But. I have way more swords now, so we can do a whole bunch of stuff now. True. We don't have as many people to do it with. it's, It's funny, because I think... Charles, ironically, he predicted my future before he even he even meant it because I was not I didn't know anything about samurai and whatnot, and now here I am today. I'm a filthy weeb. <laughs> I collect katanas even though they're all fake as hell, and I love. I'm sorry about that. I should have known better that the bright black and gold, or the Black, bright black blade with the red flames on it, which should have been fake and not real metal. <laughs> no, uh, 
No, it's if we go to Pendleton your... together, I'll buy you a samurai sword set. It's not I, even your I fault. I feed the addiction. When I went to Tri Cities, I'll, I'll I'll go take a picture real quick. But I bought her a Switch, a few games, and a samurai sword. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go get it right now, and send you a picture. Meanwhile, he, anyone listening to this is now stuck with me. I hope you are all enjoying our first attempt at a podcast. I know we're not good at this because we are literally doing this on a whim, but I appreciate all of you listening to this right now. Excuse me. Subscribe for more. Uh, Can I just say the stark contrast between our answers to that question it was like you're like oh i want to go back to when we first when i first figured out roblox and like start my passion early and i'm over here like it's a tie between making sure i don't actually grow up or just or right after the worst part some of the worst parts of my life so i don't have to go through it again well to be fair i literally had like months to think on this question because this is a question I frequently ask myself for some reason and this is the first time you ever were given a prompt like that so there is a bit of a home ground disadvantage but yeah I don't know it's it's a silly question all right here's a uh question of my own what is your your favorite his favorite niche historical like favorite niche time period or whatever because like everybody likes world war ii or old west or middle ages what's your niche interest mm, that's a good question because i personally find interest in all all of those things you've listed off yeah, um, like, what's the thing aside from that that's not as, I guess, not as, if, if, like, Roman Empire, World War II, Middle Ages were, like, the Halo, Call of Duty, and GTAs of historical periods, what's your stalker, what's your mountain blade, what's your, uh, What's your total war? Like, what's the niche side? Um, that, like, not everybody, then, like, the majority aren't into. Right, right. And then I'm not sure if those are niche enough. Like, I'm not sure if Total War and Mountain Blade are niche enough. For, but you get what I'm meaning, right? Yeah, what, what's. At least I think I do. You're, what you're kind of like. Uh, do you want me to? Try you, and yeah, you go ahead answer. and answer. I need to think on mine. All right. Either Pike and Shot, which I would describe it. With, when I mean Pike and Shot, I would say like beginning of the 1500s. So like we'll call it like 1500. Or if we want to be specific, 1503, the beginning of, like, the first battle with pike and sh- with firearms. Go from, like, 1500 to 1700. We'll smash that two whole centuries into the pike and shot era. And then prehistory. Like, caveman stuff. Like, before medals were found. Like, before writing. Okay. Talking like when agriculture was first invented, we we domesticated dogs. There was there were woolly mammoths from like Great Britain into the east coast of America. Or like even before that, like before modern humans and even beyond that. Okay, yeah, yeah. 
Um, in that case, um, or like maybe, uh, if that's like too hard, like think like maybe in like one of those periods, but like a spot that isn't focused much. So, say like mm, what was happening in China and Russia during the Middle Ages, or like the Italian front in World War II, or such. Yeah, um, I would, I'm gonna say in that case, I would say kind of basically during the wild west particularly the death of the wild west oh like the going into early 1900s yes yes um and a little bit before that because we've we've talked about this before how it's interesting how there's that kind of that gap and i'm not sure if that's near the death of the west or whatnot but there's literally a rough spot that near where in theory a cowboy and like a samurai and like one other uh, uh, it's like a victorian gentleman yeah like, a, like i think i think so a victorian gentleman it's basically these uh, these people you wouldn't think would exist at the same time could in theory have met yeah have you ever heard the thing of like there's like a not insignificant amount of time that a samurai could have sent the facts to abraham lincoln oh uh, there's like a there's a really awesome meme it was a doge meme i want to see if i can find it uh samurai Sending facts to Abraham Lincoln. Oh, damn. I just looked at the... Uh, I found it. I found it. I found it. It's it's Doge, so prepare yourself. <laughs> Right, it's in general right now. Oh my goodness, this play is spectacular. Why, hello there, friend. What can I do for you on this day of April 15th, 1865? Oh, dear friend Lincoln, sure is taking a while f to fax us. I hope nothing is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> it's... Oh my god. That's actually kind of... <laughs> uh, I just realized the other... What the other coach is doing. Uh... But, yeah, the... I, I'd say that's probably... My answer to that is because it's just that particular time frame. It's interesting to me that all these historical if figures. You're into that, you would probably like 1923 if you're into Tyler Sheridan at all. Uh, 1923 is a prequel of Yellowstone, and it's like. It's set in, well, duh, 1923, and it's dealing with, like, even the rough parts of the West are becoming even more modernized, and one of the, one of the sons is out, uh, being a man-eater hunter, like, with, like, the Salvo lions and all the going around hunting dangerous big game 
game animals, basically. Ah, huh, I might. I mean, I've mentioned this before. I'm terrible when it comes to watching shows, but yeah. I have seen like, a little bit of Yellowstone. I bought 1883, and you want to know what happened when I bought 18, 1883? What? I got carded. Carded? Uh, they asked if I was over 17. And here I am, like, almost six foot guy. I've got five o'clock shadow. I've got the general dead look in my eyes. It's oh, like, man, wait. yes, I am 17, uh, over 17. I remember flip phones. Like, at the actual store. I thought you went for, like, a second, like, they hit you with, like, a notification. No, no. I like, a pot- damn, that shows... That shows how fucking. Because I took like a disastrous crap in the store, so I had to like. Yeah, no, I get what you so mean. It's just kind of fun. that. Just shows how much of an internet dweller I am. I'm over here instantly assuming you got like a pop up before, like, oh, please verify you're 18. I didn't even think about the fact that you went physically to go buy it, and the cashier lady was like. Are you sure you're 18? No, it was the self-checkout, too. So somebody had to come over from the self-checkout station. Oh. Come verify my age. I was like, at first I thought the dang, the machine was just fucking up. It was like, please wait for uh assistant for somebody to assist you. I was like, are you kidding? They do that with you gift cards, up your too. One item. Yeah. yeah and then I tried watching it and it like went into this long melodramatic intro thing about oh it's not the great plains it's hell I was like oh my god it's it was, it's interesting seeing Tim McGraw kick people's asses. It's fun. Sounds like you're stuck with me again, audience. Uh, oh, he's back. Uh, what What is our timestamp? Sorry, I was like joining... Uh, Siege and Banner Lord. We are currently what? at 37 minutes. So we're past the half hour mark. Yeah. Well, maybe worthwhile to go a little longer. Yeah. I mean, if you got another minutes. topic. This is wild. We got that much traction out of two questions. That's true, but that is because me and you are professional ranters. Yeah. Get that on our business card. <laughs> or I guess in this modern day it would be professional yapper. <laughs> uh, it reminds me, it's kind of had a moment of where I know I'm getting old. <laughs> For the longest time, I didn't understand the English or Spanish meme. I I had to go look it up. I'm at that point where I'm behind on memes. I mean, to be fair, that one that one you can get kind of creative with. Like, I'm pretty sure I was tempted to like when you did a video. With the English or Spanish, I was like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm gonna be real. That means kind of dumb, anyways. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I'm trying to think. Have I had a moment that made me realize that I'm getting old? Um, <laughs> hmm. I mean... Oh, I was going to talk about this when you were streaming, because I feel like that's good content for streams, but it it happened. So I was like, remember the 
it was like the first song I linked. It was the one that was going, trum, 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 trum. It's basically about Launch Connects marching along to the beat of a drum. Oh, yeah. I think that's a weird song because it mentions Wallenstein and the Swedes. And like, that's the major fighting with Swedes and Germans was in the Thirty Years' War, and like mentioning Wallenstein, it uh, it confirms that. And I was like, kind of after Lawrence Kinetics had like gone out of favor. Though there was like still a lot of mercenaries. Say like the majority of fighting was like done by mercenaries. Which it was kind of a necessity to be a mercenary or like at least join an army at that point because I mentioned this in my uh, I mentioned this in my what was it uh, Pike and Shot Dragonborn uh, script that I could probably get back to like doing writing for that series but it's like but it's something like the Thirty Years' War was fought for a multitude of reasons and like had a lot of contributing factors. And I say, up to and including a mini ice age. Wow. Yeah, there was. Yeah, it was literally called that the mini ice age, and it was like a major contributor of what historians call the seventeenth century crisis. What it basically basically led to like a lot of bad crops, short growing seasons. And so there was off there was a lot of famine. And then you make it worse by having like hundreds of armies and little war bands and mercenary groups going through the uh countryside grabbing like plundering everything of value in any morsel of food. And so it's like being a guy, so if like you're a guy and like you're not gonna inherit anything, like there's very few prospects in cities or anything. Uh, be joining one of these like roaming war groups or a passing army would be very, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you would be hesitant to pass it up, is what I'm saying. Right. Like, it's a measure of security from being plundered. And it's like... If you're in a world of sheep and wolves with no shepherd, it's kind of like you'd want to be the... You'd want to be a wolf, right? Yeah. Um. Uh, I got a trap in my was I? What was the major? What was the actual point I was saying when I? was talking about <laughs> you know what um i don't remember <laughs> i got distracted by the mini ice age when you said a mini yeah so and something about your pike and shot skyrim series you are working yeah, on because like i mean of course i had to put that in there because of like a, a mini ice age was a contributing factor to one of the worst wars. This is like on level with World War One that the European continent has ever seen. You kind of want to mention that the mini Ice Age was in there. Yeah. Which... I think it's... Oh, I was talking about the Launch Connect song and Wallenstein. I... To quickly close that point, it's like it's weird that's a Lance Connect song, but it's talking about the Swedes 
presumably under Gustav Gustavus Adolphus and Manfred von Wallenstein. Uh, Wallenstein was an interesting character. He was like just your regular HRE prince or whatever. And then by the time the whole Thirty Years' War kicked off with the second defenestration of Prague, yes, now that's the thing, and there were three of them. Hmm. Uh, he had married a very wealthy widow, and so he had he had the money to like be like a supporter of the Catholic uh, emperor who was trying to re-Catholicize the empire. Because this is the, this is like a high point of the Reformation where parts of the HRE are pre- Protestant and other parts are Catholic. And for some reason, they never figured out they worship the same gods. And so they continuously fought over how to worship the same god. But also, but it was about power in reality, True. And influence and whatnot. And so Wallenstein throws his money and his army is behind the Catholic ruler of the HRE. I cannot remember who it was, but Extra Credits has a series on the Thirty Years' War, and it's framed through the Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Oh. Like, the first episode is war and, like, how the war started. Then there's famine, uh, pestilence, and then death. Death. And so it's... It was really interesting. It was a really good, like, starter. Uh, I think both the channels, Kings and Generals and... Sand Roman History, which I linked to you the night before, had videos about the Thirty Years War. I like how it started in like different battles and such. Right. But the the main point was that this was after the Lons Connects had gone out of favor. But one more Lons Connect fact. Do you know the Sabaton saw the last stand? I or everybody I... uses it in the Crusader memes. Oh, ye. Ye. Yeah. For the grace from my lord, the home of the holy, thy will be done. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Funny enough, that's not about the Crusades. It's... Is about the 1527 sack of realm, which is part of several conflicts in the 1500s called the Italian Wars. It's basically one big dog pile of the Spanish, the French, the uh, HRE, the Holy Roman Empire, and like several different. Uh, Italian states themselves, including the papacy. So, like, for long, for like, from the fall of the Roman Empire until Italian reunification, the papal, the Vatican was, of course, the seat of the head of the Catholic religion and the figurehead of the Catholic religion, but also basically its own kingdom. Right. You can you can see this in like the Assassin's Creed Ezio trilogy because he this is him growing up in that time. Hmm. And so what ha- basically short of it was a combined German and Spanish force besieged uh Rome because the Holy Roman Empire, which just requires like a whole ton of context on the relationship of the Holy Roman Empire and the Pope, the different popes before this, that stretches to the founding of the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, 
there was one guy he was in charge of all the lost connects and he was the guy that had their money that was gonna pay them and he gets shot during the siege and all the lost connects and everybody else simultaneously turn to this guy like that was our paymaster let's go get the bastards <laughs> and so uh Ro parts of Rome were raised to the ground, uh, mass, mass war crimes, and Rome, it took forever, safe to say, for Rome to recover from that. I'd imagine, honestly. <laughs> but the uh, Swiss Guard of the Papacy, like 189 soldiers that were hired from Switzerland, uh, protected the clo the Pope and allowed him to get to a safer location before anybody could get his hands on him. Nice. Well, um... That, that's probably enough for today, huh? We I was going to say, we are at 51 minutes, so we and... pretty much made it an hour. Um... Not bad, considering that this was literally last minute. So. Yeah. Like, hey, you want to do a podcast? Sure. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know how people normally close out podcasts, but I but guess. I think it's a bunch of chilling, and like, we'll see you next time. True. Uh, check out the Tojic YouTube channel. Check out the Tojic TikTok. Check out my stuff if you want. I haven't uploaded anything in forever. Uh, check out the Lord Gato YouTube channel. Check out the Lord Gato TikTok. And if Taz had anything to plug, he would say so. And, and other we'll than see that, you whenever we do this again. Yeah, we'll catch you all later. Hope you have a good night. I think I'm going to go to bed. And uh, yeah, we'll That's see you later. Not a bad idea. Right. Goodbye. Bye.